Hello everyone, and welcome back to episode 10 of the Harmonious Engineering Let's Play series. So I have a lot of stuff planned uh, for the next couple of episodes, but for this episode specifically, there is a ton to do. There's a ton of stuff that I want to get done, and the biggest thing that I want to get done currently is to go ahead and get ourselves set up with an arc furnace. So you may have noticed in last episode that I did, in fact, get a couple of uh, components hooked up and uh, get a couple of blast furnace bricks already pre-configured. Uh, and that's sort of, uh, sort of was done in foresight of what I planned on doing today. Uh, but, you know, it definitely does sort of... Are there two spiders here? There are. Weird. Um, I was sort of in foresight of what we're going to need to do today. So to get into an arc furnace, we're going to need a couple of different components. Uh, so this is the arc furnace all built up. You can see it is huge, uh, but we are going to need to get a handful of materials. So the first one is we're going to need 27 reinforced blast brick. Reinforced blast brick is made with steel. So we're going to need 27 steel ingots that we will process in our metal press to go ahead and get ourselves the requisite amount of uh, steel sheets that we're going to need. Because this is going to be a very steel intensive machine. Uh, so prepare yourself. This will take just a little bit of time to get everything uh, wrapped up and, and put together. But it's definitely going to be worthwhile because the arc furnace will give us access to a lot of different utilities such as brass and unobtainium uh, and a couple other resources. So as we look through this guy here, we're going to see that we're going to need a handful of things. We're going to need a engineering, uh, a redstone engineering block here, right? So that will be one of those. We're going to need uh, one cauldron like so. We're going to need six blocks of steel. And so what I can do is I can request the six blocks of steel from, where is it? Where is it? Steel slab, block of steel, here we go. So we'll request six of these, like so. Uh, and then we'll need uh, some steel sheet metal. So it looks like we're going to need uh, a good supply of those. If we need 16, then we'll need 16 of those. Because um, you can only craft them in sets of four. So we'll need... Uh, oh, actually, we'll need a few more than that. Let's see. That's sheet metal. Eight sheet metal. And then 16 sheet metal slab means we'll need another eight. So let's go ahead and get... This might actually be enough. Hang on. So we'll go ahead and <laughs> toss those in as well. Hopefully by now our 27 steel have been processed. Yep, looks like it has. Um, I may eventually set up a hopper system here or something so that we don't have to throw things, but I don't really mind throwing them. Uh, so to make the advanced blast bricks, what we're reinforced blast brick is we're going to take a normal blast brick and put a steel plate on top, and that will get us the reinforced blast brick. Now these are used to make an improved blast furnace, the reinforced blast furnace, which we might eventually do. Um, it's not a bad idea at all to make one. Uh, I just don't really feel like doing it at the moment, so I'm gonna hold off for the time being. Uh, so we needed that sheet metal slab, and then we also needed standard sheet metal. So let's go ahead and take all of these and turn them into sheet metal, like so. Eight of those will be for the initial sheet metal that we needed, and then we can do this to get 16 of those, and that should fulfill the sheet metal and sheet metal slabs that we needed. Looking good, looking good. Uh, for now, what I might do uh, is take a storage crate and put this down over here with all of these things so that I don't accidentally spend any of these in the process of getting the rest of this put together. Uh, so what we still need is five steel scaffolding, five heavy engineering block, and 10 light engineering block. So we're going to need uh, steel scaffolding, heavy engineering block, and light engineering block. So to do that, we're obviously going to need a few more materials once again. Not a terribly big deal, but definitely going through a whole lot of stuff right now. So that's uh, that's a that's quite quite a lot of resources we're eating through. That's for sure. Uh, so let's pull out the. Did I put my manual away? That was a that was a big mistake. 
All right, so we needed 10 light engineering. So we've got two, we'll need to get, uh, I don't actually know. These are, uh, let's see, iron mechanical components. We're gonna need some more of those for sure. Uh, and we can clear this recipe out just by clicking them in. Uh, so we're gonna need seven more of these. So that's going to be like so, we're gonna need Oh, let me think here. One of these, we're gonna need 14 iron turned into plates and then seven copper. Like so. And that will make those. Uh, for the heavy engineering, we we'll, we actually need steel scaffolding. Uh, so to make steel scaffolding, we'll do this and request and that's gonna be that. And then for the heavy engineering, we're going to need five of these. So we're going to need, oof, uh, electrum. We're gonna need another piece of electrum. And then we're going to need the steel mechanical components for this. So we're going to need, uh, once again, six more steel and whoops three copper so let's go and get those processed uh, we're also going to need a bunch of steel sheet metal um, so let's go and grab eight of these and eight iron we'll get all of that pressed up now, luckily for us, we did find the uh, Arc Furnace Electrode uh, blueprint, and this will allow us to turn hop graphite ingots directly into the electrodes that we're going to need. Um, but we do still need another blueprint, uh, and so that would be the, uh, let's see, crafting components. We somehow have not gotten this one yet. Uh, so what we can do, let's go ahead and grab three paper. We'll grab three blue dye. I don't think we're going to have three blue dye. Yeah. So we'll grab that. Uh, let's see. Blue dye. Yeah. Let's do three of these. And now we can go ahead and get ourselves the crafting components. Like so. And that's just going to be another blueprint that we'll need. Uh, so to keep these around, I'm just going to put probably like a, a chest or something nearby. I don't think that there's really anything else that I can do to store all these different blueprints we have, but we do have a few at this point. So definitely uh, working our way through all of the different things that we're going to need. You can see we've still got our uh, engineer's mold or the uh, engineer's uh, metal press mold as well. So all of our resources over here have been pressed into their corresponding pieces, which is good. Uh, so I'm going to take our, uh, let's see, the crafting components piece here, and we're going to do uh, three of these and seven of these. I believe I may have miscalculated something there. Oh, well, uh, that's not too big of a deal. And then what we can do is take all the stuff back to our main grid. Having more of these iron and steel components, definitely not a big deal. I hate making them so very much. Uh, they're just always kind of a drag, you know? Whoops. Let's try that again, please. So now if I request this recipe twice, right, you're going to need to know how to make sheet metal. That'll get us the 10 of these that we need. And then to get the heavy engineering, we needed electrum. I forgot about that. Uh, we're also going to need steel plates. Let's go and get some silver and some gold. And let's go ahead and grab these and put those back there. And I'm going to make that Electrum up real quickly. I've already shown you how I've done it before. I'll do it again. Electrum Blend Crafted. We'll just quickly cook that up over here. 
should literally take a few seconds. There we go. And now we should have everything. As you can tell, this is very steel intensive. So I've been spending a lot of my downtime uh, yesterday and today uh, getting to the point of being able to make a lot of the um, a lot of these components and making a lot of steel uh, just on the side to make sure that we are not going to end up short on any materials. So has definitely been a lot of effort. Now I believe it said we just needed five. Uh, and I want to say the same for the scaffolding, right? So we should have those three. Beautiful. I think we're ready to go. So uh, basically, this construct here is not going to work until we fill in uh, the required... We got everything? We got everything. Good. Until we fill in the required resource, which is the electron tubes, uh, or the, uh, sorry, the graphite uh, electrodes. So these guys here, we're going to need to make. Uh, you can make them in the metal press. You can make them with the engineer's blueprint. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, just sort of is what it is. Um, but let's go ahead and get ourselves this arc furnace made. So for the first layer, we're going to be using a lot of our resources from uh, steel to that cauldron. So we're going to need you in the corner, you in the middle. Looks like, let's see, a slab here and here blocks of steel there and there. And then we have a single heavy engineering block in the back. And then a bunch of our steel sheet metal there. And then everything else is going to be slabs. And this is why I created a five by five space there uh, is because I knew exactly what what size this was going to be. I may not remember the constructs by by uh, just from recall alone. I'm not that familiar with the arc furnace at least uh, but it is definitely one of those recipes or one of those structures that's like yeah I remember exactly how big it is because it's a monstrosity to make uh, so for this bottom layer we're going to need two of these uh, two rows and then the next one is four rows and more of these let's see we have a piece of uh, sheet metal in the corners and three more of those Sheet metal, sheet metal. And as mentioned, four of those. The top layer is a is a three by three. Oh goodness, did I leave myself enough headroom here? I think I just barely did, because the next one is, yeah, it's two scaffold. And then there's this number. Did I make excess sheet metal? Did I mean to make excess sheet metal? I don't remember. Well, I messed something up. Uh-huh. Right, it is probably obvious. But scaffolding here, it was supposed to be sheet metal, and then the scaffolding goes here. And then all we have left are the two extra sheet metal slabs that I knew we would have left. And there we go. That is an arc furnace. That is enormous, but actually fits the space really well. That's a fire hazard, but we don't have fire tick on because I don't like my structures burning down and I don't like the lag it can occasionally cause. Um, but those get really hot sometimes. And so <laughs> that, whoo, that is, that, that whoo, fire hazard. I may end up replacing that with more steel girder or metal girders. Um, I don't think there would really be any major issue in doing that. Um, Except now I've got to go get that log that I have to like parkour my way over to. But as you can tell, this thing is a is a steel monstrosity, uh, but it is capable of so very much. So we can recycle a bunch of these metal materials we have just sitting around. Uh, has hazmat pants. Okay. Uh, any of these sheet metals that we made, we can always uh, scrap back into their original ingots, which is pretty much the best dang thing. Uh, this also takes into account damage materials. So if I put something in that only has like a single durability left, then it's going to give me very little back. Um, so this is going to need a couple of things. It's going to need energy around the back, which is uh, slightly, slightly, slight, eh, a little problematic, slightly problematic. Well, um, we'll see. Uh, am I stuck? I am somewhat stuck here. 
and we're going to not only need the metal or the energy around the back we're going to need way more energy than we're currently producing um, to run this thing for extended periods of time fortunately that was never the plan uh, it was never the plan to run this thing for longer than like 30 seconds um, for brass mainly <laughs> so I think we're good there um, but we're also going to need those electron tubes now, unfortunately, and, and fortunately, I guess, it depends on how you see it, uh, that's going to require yet another device whoops, to create. Um, and by the way, this is what I was talking about with the uh, sheet metal looking almost the same color as steel, somewhere between steel and iron. I mean, those, I like the steel better, but these look good. I think that looks good. Um, so, I knew that there was a creeper out here. I wasn't sure if it had come back or not. So, uh, at this point, we need to make one more machine, and that is going to take our coal coke that I've been accruing uh, and turn that from dust that I'm about to make into the hop graphite. So, we need 12 hop graphite in total, which means that we are going to need way more coal coke, actually. Whoops. Uh, well, I might have to, to wait this one out a little bit, get another stack of coal coke, uh, and actually, let me get two more because I've got... I'd like to get two even stacks just for my own mental health. That would be ideal. Uh, so if we come over here, grab that one, and then we'll put these in here. And I'll toss that food tank there. Uh, so I'll be back when we have enough for everything. Uh, in the meantime, though, the, uh, the three graphite uh, electrodes are basically all that's keeping us from, from progressing. So yeah, let me get those and uh, oh, really quickly to get to get this far right, we need hop graphite dust, which means we're going to need to make an industrial squeezer. I'm gonna bookmark the squeezer itself, even though that's not really too useful. Um, and then the industrial squeezer uh, will be able to um, squeeze us the eight coke dust. And so if we need twelve of these, then of course we're gonna need ninety six, I believe, uh, coke dust. So that's going to be. Um, not, not, not a great time. 96 is, is a little more than 62. So what we can do though, is we can start to take these and toss them in the crusher. And, uh, while we wait for everything else to process through, I guess we'll, we'll hope that this gets done pretty quickly. So yeah, I'm going to go and work on that. I might go ahead and work on, uh, some of the wiring in here as well. Cause as you can imagine, uh, wiring is about to become a pain in the butt. So yeah, let me, let me maybe do that as well. Ready, everyone. So we do have a good bit of our uh, coke dust processed. I've got the remaining 40 currently processing through. Uh, definitely took a little bit of an AFK break there and just let some stuff process because I was running out of some chores to do around the house. So I felt like it would be uh, good to just let things kind of process on their own. Uh, so now we've got <laughs> quite a bit of other resources. But we still need to make that industrial squeezer because in order to get our coal coke turned, sorry, our coke dust uh, turned into hop graphite, uh, we're definitely going to need to get that squeezer. So let's go ahead and look into the industrial squeezer. Uh, squeezer. There we go. And so this structure is a little bit less annoying, uh, only marginally so, but definitely somewhat. It looks like we're going to need a piston. Looks like we'll need six steel scaffolding. We'll go ahead and just make up a new set since that is already a multiple of six. Uh, let's see, two light engineering blocks. I don't know if we have any light engineering blocks left. We do not, so we'll have to make some of those. Uh, let's go ahead and get those bookmarked. Uh, we're going to need a redstone engineering block. And let's see, three seal fences. What we can do is go ahead and request up a couple more steel rods and then go ahead and get that. Three steel fences. We're going to need two fluid pipes, so that's going to be iron bars, uh, rather iron plates, uh, so let's go ahead and get some iron plates ready. Let's also go ahead and get, uh, what is it that we're going to need? 16, I think. Let's get 32 uh, iron plates put together and 16 copper. So that way we don't have to make the light engineering uh, all that often. And actually, let's have that. I forgot we've got to make sheet metal. And then I think all we have left is a fluid pipe and then the four wooden barrels. I forgot about those. Uh, wooden barrel. So these are going to use uh, a large supply of our 
uh, treated wood, but that's perfectly fine. We have tons. Uh, so we're going to need two of that recipe and then two of this recipe. Sorry, four. And that gets us the four barrels that we're going to need. So let me go and get this iron pressed up and I will return. All right, so we have everything we need for our industrial squeezer. We just need to go and get ourselves some LV, uh, and I'm going to go and make an extra set of the uh, make an extra set of those uh, light engineering blocks, just because why not? Uh, so I don't have any idea where I'm going to put this squeezer permanently. So I think temporarily I'll just put it out front here because it is a uh, structure that I don't have any use for really for too long at the moment. Uh, there are definitely things that we will need it for, especially because I plan on getting into um, getting into the uh, diesel engine uh, and diesel production. But right now, I don't really have any major use for it. So uh, I'm not really 100% certain how we are going to proceed. But this structure is pretty easy to make. Uh, you've just got the three of those and one of those. Again, I'm going to take the wrench here and rotate and then we will activate the oh, come on there we go we'll activate this guy and that's going to get us a squeezer now the squeezer's energy input is up here on the top so we will hook that up if possible i think it is don't think we'll have any issues yep, yep. there we go and now i'm just going to put in the coke dust and you'll see it has this really lovely little animated model uh, effect that goes on here where the actual squeezing happens and that gets us our first piece of hop graphite dust uh, the hop graphite dust of course needs to be smelted uh, into the hop graphite ingots and you can see that it is going to consume uh, a significant number of these at a time and so i'm going to go ahead and take these and get them smelted really quickly just to show you exactly what we still have left in store this, again, is a very fast little process we've got set up here, so this shouldn't take too terribly long. Uh, and in vanilla immersive engineering, what I'm about to make here usually requires durability on that guy right there. So these usually take durability. You see it has an integrity tooltip there. But I have, for the sake of the uh, enjoyment of immersive engineering, made all recipes for these unbreakable because, frankly, immersive engineering's inability to automate uh, that process makes it a little bit less easy to just kind of force as a, as a long-term component of the game. Um, so since you're going to have to use the arc furnace for a while, I kind of didn't want to make it a miserable process to use every single time and so that was kind of my thinking uh in that in that decision in that regard uh, let me get some more clay we're going to need to get a little bit more so that we can make some lv wire relays because i'd like to reorganize the wiring inside as i think i've already mentioned let's go ahead and put these on the on these little depots and get them cooked up in the meantime. That gets us eight, that gets us two. We can go ahead and make ourselves some more relays. And as mentioned, I think we're going to have to re do this pretty pretty substantially. I think that'll be okay, but just kind of a pain. Um, only only very slightly a pain, I should say. So let me go ahead and get this rewired. I will, however, toss this in. It will degrade its own own durability for a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, its own uh, energy, I should say. But with these three graphite electrodes, we'll put them here in the top. You can see they show up there in the top. That little black piece there is part of the model, and you can see it as I interact with this. Uh, so now I have the challenge of hooking up the uh, actual the actual behemoth that we've just created of an arc furnace. So let me get that done and I shall return. Alrighty, so we do finally have everything reorganized and rewired. I centered all of the connectors with the room. So this one is centered uh, along the center of this little pad and then along the center of this little pad. Uh, on both the X and Z axes. Same goes with this connector here, and this connector is of course smack dab in the middle of uh, all the pads and goes over here behind. Uh, I removed the the um, 
the OSHA concern logs, because they uh, they they were most certainly a fire hazard. Uh, the marshal would not have been happy with me if I kept those there. Uh, and we have behind here a single wire connector. Now, ideally, you would have multiple, but our throughput for energy is not nearly high enough for that to make a difference. Uh, so I'm just going to do the one, and this guy's just going to be thirsty for power whenever I use it. And that's totally fine. I don't care. Uh, we could help resolve that a little bit by putting down an accumulator to be a buffer, uh, and we could put down a big enough accumulator as a buffer that might be able to offset or negate um, any of the effects for short-term usage. Uh, so that that is an option that I might look into. We do need to get a redstone acid bucket for that, and that would be a little bit pricey, um, but definitely very much doable. So as I clean up my inventory here and get a couple of things spewed back at me, no worries though, easy enough to fix, um, I'm going to go ahead and start focusing on the quest line again. So you see we get half a stack of nuggets of experience, which is great because, uh, as you can see, I've got lots of levels. Um, there is the uh, bottle of enchanting. Is there a way to get that? Because I'd love to make an insightful crystal. There is. So I can make this recipe here. Maybe we should do that. Uh, really quickly, if we take that and what was it, four of these? We can do this. And with our bottle of enchanting, we can do that. And now we can store all of our levels of XP. Uh, so this will be helpful for us going forward. And I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. I think I forgot that that bottle of enchanting recipe was available. Um, but that was just a shower thought I realized as I was running through and getting that XP back. I was like, wait a minute, I should get one of those. So. At this point, we're left with a couple of options in this pack, and uh, one of the things I'd love to start working on is some sort of immersive arsenal. Uh, so we can make a mining drill or a buzzsaw, a revolver, a rail gun, or a chemical thrower. I think a mining drill would be very fun to make and very helpful to have around. Uh, I don't remember which of these components we have. Let's see. Okay, so we're good on most of these things. We just need the wooden grips, and these are easy enough to make. Uh, so let's go ahead and send the stuff back. Uh, and grab uh, two of these and a uh, copper ingot. And we can go ahead and get ourselves one of the mining drills. And so now, if I get the mining drill itself, that will technically fulfill the quest. And that's kind of the goal, but I also actually genuinely want to use this. So in order to use this, what you're going to need, I think I may have an extra. Uh, I do not. Let's make an extra engineer's workbench. We're going to need some components for that for sure. Um, let's go ahead and try to get that really quickly. Here we go. And I do have an extra crafting table, so we'll do that. And then to get to you, we'll need this. And that will give us an extra one of these. So the reason that I want an extra is because you can augment and upgrade these in our table here. And you can actually see it literally sitting on the table when you put it down. So this guy would replace our pickaxe um, only slightly. I think it would really more replace the hammer than anything. Um, but it would let me kind of clean up the, the inventory a little bit. Uh, and what we need for this drill is a drill bit or drill head. So I'm going to go for the steel drill head because, you know, why not? We have enough steel that I think we'd be good to do that. Um, so we can go ahead and do that. Did I just find a bug? I think I just found a bug. Let me see. Oh. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, that makes sense. Um, it's, a, that, it's a little weird. It's a slightly strange way of doing that, but I... It, it basically grabbed the output of that, which is fine. Now, if we take a look at the steel mining drill head, you'll see that it has a th or 10,000 durability, uh, and that durability is not augmentable at all. Uh, at best, what we can do, uh, of course, is recycle this for steel. We can make other things like a mechanical drill or a flux bore. And I've done flux bores before. I've done a lot of those things before, but I wanted to try something slightly different this time around. That grizzly bear is on the go. 
Uh, so that's why we're here. Now, I wanted to confirm that these can't be enchanted. I'm like 99% sure. Yep, okay. Uh, and I would have to assume the same goes for like a book that has an enchantment, but I wouldn't know. Uh, so <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But, uh, and I, I think the actual drill itself is also not enchantable, correct? Correct, okay. Because I really wish that these could be augmented with Silk Touch or something. That would be really nice, uh, but they can't, and that kind of, uh, kind of doesn't soil it necessarily, but it definitely makes it less than ideal. So I'm going to grab this, and you'll see that in the lower right-hand corner we have a gauge uh, that tells us um, what the... Uh, what the fuel level is. And we can take durability off by using the drill as is, but there are a couple of fuels that you can use in the mining drill. So in vanilla immersive, the, the main tool that you would use uh, would be, or sorry, the main fuel you would use would be biodiesel. And biodiesel is perfectly acceptable and perfectly fine, perfectly cool, uh, but we do have other fuels in this pack. So I uh, have added integration to use fuels like gasoline. Uh, and I believe I can't remember which ones can be used. Uh, I'd have to really go, go double check and, and see for myself because I can't remember. It's been a minute. Uh, but the gasoline can be used. And so when I right click on that, the gasoline emptied by two buckets. Uh, in fact, I'm going to grab a jerry can full of it. And that's 10 buckets. And I believe jerry cans can be used to refill. I don't really remember 100% on that. Um, I have to do my research on, on the mining drill for sure. Uh, but now we have a drill that can harvest wood blocks just fine. It can harvest, uh, obviously, like uh, uh, soil materials, soil-like materials, you know, earthen materials like these. Uh, it can harvest stones, and it can also do a multi-block mine in like a 3x3 or a 1x1. Let me go and take this guy out, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I came over here into this little alcove or this little cave, uh, I can start to break multiple blocks all at once. And uh, as you can see, there's no fortune, there's no silk touch. Uh, again, I don't think there is a way to do that, but I'm going to read into the book and make sure that I'm not incorrect there, uh, because unfortunately I don't have all the expertise in the world on that, which would be nice. I also, I feel like that should work. I feel like that should work. Okay, I was close. Uh, you do this, and that will refill. So that is exactly what I thought would happen. Uh, so cool, cool. So there is that. Again, this isn't for me at least, you know, ideal because I cannot enchant it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, but I'd love to find a way to do that. So we might look into. Um, I'd love. I really would love to find a way to do like enchanted recipes for the drill bits. So I might. I might do that. I might find a a cool recipe that I could do for it. Um, just because, you know, I think that the, the mining drill from Immersive is really, really underutilized. I personally never use it because I can't enchant it, and I think that that is a big pain. Um, but that's just me. That's just my opinion, I guess, you know. I, I also probably understand that there's some component from Blue Sunrise about, uh, about why that that was done that way, but definitely, uh, definitely kind of unfortunate but you can see how cool it looks and and part of why i love it so much is just that it, it looks well or it looks really nicely uh and, and it runs really nicely everything about it's just sort of convenient um aside from the fact that it requires fuel but if you can carry the fuel around with you in jerry cans then to me that's a non-issue so i'm gonna look into some alternatives for that we may make a couple of pack changes in real time because i really want to enjoy this thing um and for me if i could get silk touch on one of these i would be thrilled now i do know that there is another option for silk touch, so maybe that's what I'm. I, I should really reevaluate. Is that there is the uh, there is the cutting tool. Uh, what is it called? The rock cutter blade. This guy here can be used for a couple of things. Uh, so maybe we should have done that instead. The uh, rock cutter blade. Let me see. That's part of the saw. The buzz saw. Um, the rock cutter blade makes it silk touch like, but diamond tip blade is no longer useful for tree stuff. Um, bucket of phenolic resin will make you a grinding disc. And that allows you, basically makes it act like a, a rotational grinder. Quickly cutting through metal blocks, break other materials easily. So it looks like, really, if we did the buzzsaw, it would have to be a specialized tool anyway. So while I do kind of 
kind of get that. I'm also kind of bummed. So I don't know. We'll see how, how we decide to integrate this in. Um, there's also Pneumatic Craft, uh, which we will be showing some love today. But right now, I want to um, finish up some of this work here. But Pneumatic Craft has, where is it? It is the Jackhammer, right? Here it is. The pneumatic jackhammer, uh, it can be enchanted with quite a few different things, such as uh, yin and yang and holding, but I'm not seeing anything for uh, fortune, but I can't remember if that is an enchantment or if it is a module or what. Um, so I have to look into that as well. So give me a little bit of time to do some research. I'm, I'm not really sure what I remember anymore. Alrighty, so I've done my research, I've done my fair share of testing uh, and debugging and stuff, and it looks like the uh, easiest way for me to have done this, and the easiest way that I, I have done this, um, is for me to make it a recipe uh, that basically wipes any other enchantment data off and make, forces the enchantment data to be uh, a certain way. So what I've done is the following. There is now a recipe for a Silk Touch book plus an empty drill. And this I, I have tested. It actually has to be Silk Touch, actually has to be like NBT specific matching. Uh, so Silk Touch will get you a Silk Touch drill. If the drill body has the enchantment, it works. If the drill head has the enchantment, it does not work. Uh, and so, yes, I know that this is a little bit outside of Blue's original, uh, not even expectation, but like... Uh, design but frankly reading through some of blue's old reddit comments which i'm not saying they're controversial or that they're even problematic but reading through some of them it sounded like it was sort of like a, a you know look this thing is a big burly mining drill you're not going to get that level of precision so you're not going to be able to enchant them and uh you know that's the one one of the few times especially with the, you know kind of pulling back the curtains and i'll explain to me as a pack developer i thoroughly disagree there are many other options that are much bigger the infinity drill for one uh, that can be enchanted. So I think that that is, uh, in, in and of itself, with just vanilla Minecraft and immersive engineering, I can agree with that. But with all the other mods in this environment, uh, at least a configuration option would have been nice. But uh, the fact that there isn't one, you know, this is this is not an unreasonable workaround. I don't love it. It's a little gross, a little, a little dumb, uh, just on the implementation side of things. I really wanted to make this a little cleaner, using either the smithing table or literally probably anything else would have been nicer looking. But the smithing table doesn't support this kind of recipe because uh, it expects the MBT to stay the same, but the item to change. Uh, whereas I'm doing the opposite, the item is the same and the MBT is different. Uh, and I don't have a mod for doing anvil recipes. I might add one just for this. Uh, we'll see how weird uh, and particular I decide to get. Um, but right now, we're just going to stick with the, the, ooh, I was looking at the wrong thing, the unenchanted mining drill. And I'd like to see about getting uh, a Silk Touch book. So maybe what I'll do is for the rest of this episode, go find a couple of villagers and see what we can get on uh, some enchantments. Because I know we have a couple of villages nearby. Uh, and we do have a few emeralds. We also have um, a significant amount of other resources that we can trade for. Uh, oh, I actually wanted those books now that I think about it. Um, we have uh, plenty of uh, wood, so if I grabbed uh, logs, I can grab, you know, a couple of stacks of these uh, and turn them into sticks. I've also got a good bit of sugar cane, so we can grab, you know, three stacks of this and turn that into paper and trade for uh, sort of the things that I'd be looking for. So I'm going to make a lectern. I'm going to go grind around uh, and try to get a couple of good rolls on some villagers, maybe bring a couple of trapdoors and other restrictive blocks to keep them from running around, because you know they will. Uh, you know, fence gates probably would also be good, but I'll just do a trapdoor. Uh, what, what planks do we have? Okay, yeah, I'll figure something out there, uh, and I'll meet up with you here in just a little bit. Okay, I might be getting a little bit sidetracked here, but look at this. I mean, 16 level, or 16 x 16 emeralds, words, uh, for looting three? I mean... That sounds ideal to me. Um, mind you, that, that is a large majority of my emeralds, but still, though. So I'm going to keep that guy around. Uh, I'm just going to leave you a nice little workstation right there. Uh, and let's see if we can trick one of these other villagers into giving me a good trade. I may also trap you in here just so that you don't run out. Because, see, you're trying to. You're trying to. Reconsider, please. I have a career for you. Possibly. It's a great career opportunity. Can we can we link? 
So I don't think I could have gotten any luckier. This is probably one of the best Silk Touch deals I have ever seen. So I'm going to grab a few of those. Uh, you probably don't want any of my wares, though. So uh, I think that's I think that's really it. I think that's really all we're going to do while we're here. Um, nope. Give me that left turn back. But I definitely, definitely made a lot of good progress here with a lot of good enchantments. So I'm going to head back and... Uh, Put a trap door down here on the floor just to keep them from trying to escape. Uh, again, you know, villagers, not not all that intelligent. Um, so trying to avoid chaos wherever possible. Like there. There we go. Okay, so now if I ever do need to come back over, I can just go up the stairs here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to head back home and I'll meet you there. All right, so let me go ahead and unequip my drill head. Just as an FYI, anything that you do not, uh, anything that you do not store somewhere else will just be lost. So if you have like fuel that you want to get out of there, get it out of there now, um, and then do your upgrade because you can see that it will just wipe out any MBT data that is not the Silk Touch Enchant. Uh, and now we can reapply that. Uh, have a Silk Touch drill filled with our gasoline. Oop. Also set to three by three mode by default for some reason. And I think that is a <laughs> great enchantment to have on hand, uh, at least in my opinion. That looting three also just absolutely, absolutely lovely to have. At this point, all I really want is mending. Uh, but there's only so much that I really find of importance with, with mending, in regards to mending at least. Uh, so we'll see if that's really a, a high priority thing for me. But I'll go ahead and refill this. And again, we have we have Silk Touch now. So um, I know that this is against Blue's design. I don't really care. Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it either. I I think that personally, Silk Touch and, and Fortune should be um, permitted. But that's just me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been here to use this personally. So uh, now that we've had that little that little excursion, that little side quest go on, let's actually use our arc furnace. We made it. We haven't really done anything with it, but let's wrap up the episode getting into uh, probably the greatest creation that we have available to us, and that is brass at this point. So brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, and it is a one-to-one. -one. So let's grab that copper that we have. Uh, I'm just going to turn all of this black back into the... Uh, ingot form and put that away and what we can do assuming that none of that bounces back is we can come over here to our arc furnace and start making some brass because brass is going to be huge for us and this arc furnace is as well so if I put these two here you're going to see as promised our uh, our built-in power buffer is going to do, drop uh, I can make this run faster by spreading all of these copper ingots across all 12 of these inventory slots, but that's going to, to greatly increase the power consumption even further, and that's also not ideal. Uh, that little red bar is the heat, sort of akin to uh, Tinker's Construct's heat, so we're basically heating up this ingot and then tossing in a zinc ingot to go with it to make this brass. Uh, I don't know really how much we're going to need, but if we get this one piece, we're going to unlock... A whole new quest chapter, the Create Brass Age. So the Create Brass Age is a very fun age. It's got a lot to it. There's a lot in Create that we have had to sort of uh, avoid or ignore. Um, by the way, you can see that there's this really cool animation as the molten lava uh, or the molten metal uh, pours through. Um, but now that we have gotten ourselves some brass, we have unlocked basically uh, the next chapter in our research. And so that gets us into the Create Brass Age. Uh, the Brass Age is important because we need 20 mechanical crafters. You can see that this creates three of them. Uh, but the Electron Tube recipe here, um, which is going to be used a lot, is going to definitely require us to get a lot more redstone, uh, get into nether quartz as well, which we already have. But we're also going to need that brass casing uh, to make the mechanical crafter as a whole. The reason we need 20 of these is because it is a 4 by 5 recipe grid that you'll need in order to create the vast majority of the machines in thermal. Um, so, sorry, I just noticed that that looked a little, a little odd. I think the angle on the dimensional chest is a, diff a little different from the usual angle. Um, but as you can see, all of these machines here in thermal are going to require uh, a bunch of standard recipe items. So that would be, uh, you'll have eight scaffolding, uh, four on each side. You'll always have a machine frame here and a redstone engineering block here. 
and a light engineering block here and three iron sheet metal on the bottom. Uh, but then these six items, these six, these three here and these three here will be different uh, per recipe. That makes us a little bit more automatable. It means that you can basically put a crafter and an item distributor or some sort of uh, pipes set up uh, to set that up, and it would be totally automatable that way. Um, but this also just kind of opens up a couple of other options for us. So um, definitely just something to sort of consider as we move forward is that we have a lot still available to us within Create itself because the uh, brass will also allow us to get into, of course, some of the gadgetry uh, and a couple of other like standard Create items that we're going to really, really, really uh, dig into, of course. Um, but then there is also, where is it? I'm looking for it here. Not the electric motor, but, well, I thought I knew where it was. Is it going to be here? Yes, this guy, the rotational compressor. So this will allow us to take create rotation, uh, create torque, and turn that into uh, compressed, uh, rather, um, uh, pressure from Pneumaticraft. So this is probably going to be the way that we're going to create most of our pressure this Let's Play because it is very simple to set up. Uh, it's renewable. It's it's very clean. The explosion risk is pretty minimal. Uh, and again, it doesn't. It's renewable. It doesn't cost us a bunch of fuel. So I think I'm going to call it for an episode here because we have done so much. But next episode, what we'll do is we'll loop back around, uh, set up a couple of things using creates new contraptions that we have access to, uh, and get ourselves a better uh, compression setup. Because with a better compression setup. Uh, we can begin to improve our own arsenal and start to get into some of the power armor that was all the way back in the very first chapter of tech here, the pneumatics chapter. We completely skipped over the pneumatic gear here because not so much that it was difficult to make, but mostly because it was uh, difficult to maintain with our current set of technology and, and pressure creation at the time. But now we're doing a lot better for ourselves, so I think we'll be ready. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.